so I started my day off right. I actually ate breakfast before I even dropped my kids off for school. I am, one of my challenges is to follow my meal plan, which obviously, but stick to the schedule because it's so easy for me to get busy and literally forget, but then my eating disorder will sneak in and take advantage of that. And the next thing I know, well, you skipped this snack so you can skip this meal. Well, you've already done this, so you might as well wait till dinner. And then, oh, it's too late. So it can really snowball. And I am aware of that. My dietitian and I and my therapist have talked about it. So I'm really trying. I know that it's the little things that can really add up. And I still, I'm just struggling with the, I need to be productive in order to sort of like earn food. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what's all behind that, but I feel guilty that I took so much time to be in treatment and I feel like I need to kind of make up for that. So if I'm productive and working and getting things done, then I am like being productive and making up for that lost time. But if I'm stopping and taking time to eat a meal, I feel like I'm being selfish. I feel like I'm being lazy. I don't know why. I Does anyone else feel like that? It's hard. So I am now at Old Navy. I just ordered some stuff online for my son and I it for pickups. So I need to go pick that up. And I went to Walgreens after I dropped my kids off and to do a quick errand and the they were supposed to be open like for like over a half hour and I so I showed up and they the doors were closed and the employees were out there I guess her manager never showed up which kind of seems weird for a Walgreens like I don't know not judging I just um I'm sure that someone's having a bad day so I hope their day is better and I hope that the customers who can't get in and have to wait aren't going to be grumpy and it didn't ruin their day because it didn't ruin mine. I can always swing by later. It wasn't even that important. But I'm going to go run in to Old Navy and pick up what I ordered. Just got back to the car from Old Navy and what a weird morning. I The whole Walgreens thing where they were open on time and now I went to Old Navy and I had ordered stuff um, late last night, like after they closed and I went to go pick it up. So it was ready this morning, but I, they only gave me one thing and they said that the other thing wasn't in stock at this store, but they could ship it. And I said, well, let me just go look and see if there's something else that I think my son might want, but otherwise I'll just have them ship that. Well, I went and I thought, oh, well, there's the sweatshirt that I ordered for him. And I went and looked and sure enough, they, they had a size and I went and got it. So I actually went and found what I had ordered and what they should have had in my bag for pickup. Not a big deal. It happens. The lady was really nice and felt bad. And she actually gave it to me for less money than even after the sell price, she gave me a, a really good deal. So I was appreciative, but yeah, so I had to go and get my own pickup stuff, which again, not a big deal. I just did it that way because I had used my super cash before it expired was the only reason. Okay. So I'm going to try going back to Walgreens. We'll see how that goes, but it's a Monday. I have started my Monday off really well because I have eaten breakfast. I have actually brought along a snack. I just threw something in the car and I do this. I will keep things in the car. I actually brought this, but I make sure that I have snacks just because it's so easy. Again, it's so easy to say, well, I don't have anything. I'll get something later. And then that something later doesn't happen. So I have no excuse. I have a snack. If I'm still out during snack time on my schedule, I will eat that. Okay. Let's see how the day goes. That was successful. Walgreens was open again. And I got just the few things I went in for mainly just, I had coupons for stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to go home now and get on with the rest of my day. Okay. The saga continues. It's the next day. And if you remember, 
I went to Walgreens yesterday and a half hour after they opened and the employees were outside because the manager didn't show up. So they said, I went back. It was fine. They said that there was a confusion in scheduling. No big deal. A life goes on. Then I went to Old Navy to pick up some things that I had ordered the night before, like late after they would have closed. And I came in pretty early after they opened and they only had one item. I, I ordered two items. They only had one. They said the other one they didn't have in stock, but I could have it shipped. I said, that's fine. Um, it was some clothes for my son. I wanted to make sure I couldn't find something else for him or something that I think he might like instead. Well, I looked around. I was like, hmm. I went over there and sure enough, the item that I had ordered in the size I had ordered that they said was out of stock was right there. Not a big deal. Life goes on. So then my son, I said, oh, I put your stuff on your bed. There's a little navy bag. He, I just got him some sweats and a sweatshirt. He has wellness, so like PE, and he needed some new sweats for that. And so last night he said, well, how am I supposed to wear these? And I said, what? He said, well, the, the jacket, the sweatshirt is fine. He said, but the sweats, I said, I don't know how you wear them. Just put them on. He said, well... And he shows me, do you see that? That's the security tag that is still on. So with all these inconveniences, and really they're just inconveniences, it's not a big deal. But I could say, wow, you know, someone, there's a lot of people just not quite with it, not doing the job and it's inconveniencing me and making my life harder. You know what? I just am having the attitude that wow, not everyone is perfect. None of us are perfect. And it's just a reminder that we're not perfect. And in recovery, we don't have to be perfect. I know that that's, you know, sometimes like, well, I didn't do this or this, so I might as well do this or this or not do this or this, whatever fill in the blank is for you. So I, again, it's not perfect and we are all doing the best we can. The big thing is that we keep going. And I was thinking about this security tag that is on these sweats. And I'm actually just now outside of Old Navy. I'm going to run in and have them take it off. I was just thinking about my own life not being, you know, perfect. And I, uh, one thing that I've been struggling with, and it's, I admit um, that I might not have the best self-awareness. I think a lot of us, it's hard for us to see, in an eating disorder, it's hard for us to see kind of the reality, honestly, not all the times, but that's where I'm at right now. So one thing that we've been talking about is how my, you know, husband says, well, cause I he said, you know, I feel like I'm a lot more emotionally there for everyone. I'm more present. He said, well, I feel like you're around more cause I isolate Indian disorders tend to make people isolate. It makes me isolate. So he said, well, you are around more, but I feel like it's not really you. Like, it's just like, like a figure of you, but it's not really you. Like the real you isn't really there. Like there's something like still kind of a big wall. And I was thinking about these, the security tag and how these pair of sweats were put in such a nice little bag. And you can see I, well, I had to open up the little sticker, but it was a nice little bag with a sticker you know, my little order on the side and it looked like a pretty little bag with exactly what I ordered and it looked perfect. Walked out of the store. It looked perfect. Looks can be deceiving. So I was thinking, even though I'm trying to recover and I feel like I've got it, I still have the security tag. I still have my eating disorder still secured on me. It's little. You don't see it when it's in a pretty little bag. Most people wouldn't see it except when it gets to the point that, you know, someone needs to wear them. I still have that security tag. I still have that one little piece that not everyone sees still stuck on me. And I need to get help, professional help to get this little piece off. I can't get it off by myself. Even though it's little, it's still that little piece where the eating disorder tries to hang on and won't let you go unless you go get professional help to get the tag off. And that's where I'm at. That's where I'm emitting. And it just helped me see that 
again, not only are we not perfect, we're not perfect in our eating disorders and that's okay. And that in recovery, I think sometimes I'm holding on, even though I think I'm doing really well, I feel like it looks like I'm doing well, but eventually someone's going to see that I still have that security, that little teeny tiny tag of my eating disorder still hooked to me that I just am walking around with. And the only way I'll be free is really to get help and get that thing taken off that I can't do by myself. Does that make sense? It just really made me think. So here I am at Old Navy. I'm going to try this again. I think life gives us reminders if you are open to seeing them. And this is one of those times that I am just reminded that I do still need help and I might not see that security tag of my eating disorder still hanging on to me. I will never be truly free of my eating disorder until I continue just to work on it and get help. So that's what I have to say. I'm going to go in and get it taken off. Okay, bye. success. Got it taken care of. Super easy. I walked in. The alarm went off because I had the tag on the sweats. Just went over there and um, they were super nice about it and apologized. No big deal. Life happens. Life is not perfect and neither is recovery.